So let's start with, what's your name? My name is Bonnie Nags, and what? I'm village historian. What year were you born? 1930, September 1st. Okay. Be sure and send me a card. <laughs> How long have you lived in North Baltimore? I'm not dead yet. I moved here in 1937. Why did you move to North Baltimore? Because my father worked here. Where did he work at? He ran a gasoline station where the Marathon Station is now. Okay. Not that building. And what keeps you in North Baltimore? I haven't figured that out yet, except I, I like the community. It's a friendly town. People are helpful if, uh, if you need help. Uh, the neighbors are usually pretty nice to you. So you went to school here, right? I graduated in 1948, 70 years ago this year. How has the schooling system changed? What's different from when you went to school? Well, of course you have a new building now, and technology is the big thing. Uh, the technology we had uh, was an electric typewriter. And those are obsolete now with the computer. What kind of trends were popular when you were young in school? Nobody had much of anything. No. We were all poor, but we didn't know it because everyone was poor. Uh, World War II, there was uh, rationing, uh, food stamps, uh, shoes, uh, sugar, meat, gasoline. Where did you go in town to hang out with your friends when you were in school? We usually met at the movie. That was the big entertainment center. And then many years later, like about 1958, uh, I started a teen town. It was called Tiger Teen Town. And it was located to the east of where the Marathon Station is today. And uh, we had uh, ping pong, pool tables, TV. Uh, we had special dances, and we invited all of the different schools that were in our uh, sports league. And we have a Christmas dance. And that sounds really cool. What kind of businesses and things on Main Street do you remember that aren't really here anymore? Many of them. Well, there's no longer a bakery. We used to have a bakery on Main Street, and uh, I don't think there's a barber shop on Main Street anymore. There's a beauty shop, uh, and there used to be two beauty shops on Main Street. Uh, we don't have a hardware on Main Street anymore. Uh, one time we had five grocery stores on Main Street. We had Kroger, A&P, two Clover Farm stores, and an independent store. You're going to learn more than you wanted to know. <laughs> what kind of stories were you told when you were a kid by your parents or by anybody else? Well, I, I don't know. I guess they didn't talk much about the past. Uh, I'm not sure why. I, of course, now I wish I would have asked questions, but at that time I didn't know what questions to ask. Uh, I do know uh, my mother went to a country school that was called Denver, which is at the corner was at the corner of Liberty High and Route 18, and that's basically the CSX area right now and she had to walk to school. She did tell about walking to school when the snow was as high as the fence post, which would have been probably about four feet high and walking over snow drifts. Wow. That's about the only uh, stories uh, that I recall. Okay. What kind of occupations have you done over the years? <clears throat> 
Well, uh, I worked at D.S. Brown Company for nine years, and then I went to the newspaper, and uh, I just ended a 50-year career with the newspaper, or maybe 60. Uh, I have been a realtor for 30 years and sold a lot of houses in town and wondered where the money went. What kind of historical events have you lived through? Well, of course, the big thing was World War II. Uh, and then uh, there, there's been several things that happened since then, like uh, and the, the bombing of the federal building in uh, Oklahoma, and uh, then uh, the New York Trade Center airplane and Pentagon crash thing, and uh, Vietnam War, uh, the Korean War, uh, and uh, what was the latest war called? Uh, whatever that was. Desert Storm? Huh? Desert Storm? Yeah. What big inventions came out when you were younger that you remember? Well, the telephone was here when I came. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, of course, the, probably the first thing that uh, made it easier to take care of your household chores was uh, the automatic washer and dryer. You didn't have to hang them out on the line anymore or use a scrub board to clean your clothes. And, and of course, TV, uh, computers, uh, digital cameras, a lot of technology. Uh, all kinds of technology things. Have you traveled out of the country? Well, the <clears throat> They tried to run me out one time. <laughs> uh, yes, I've been to Canada a couple times. Uh, I've never been overseas. Uh, I've never flown in an airplane. Have you flown in an airplane? No, I have not. What do you think North Baltimore is going to be like in the future? Well, the way it's been going, I'm wondering if it's going to be here. Oh, wow. uh, you know, Main Street used to be a thriving place, and every storefront was built. <clears throat> but we had an appliance store in town. You could buy any appliance coming and going, TVs, uh, washers, dryers, uh, the whole thing. We don't have that. Uh, there's, and, and part of the problem is, if we're in a uh, location where we're halfway between Finley and Bowling Green, which draw people for their shopping and, and like that. Uh, and so the small town is getting smaller, not just North Baltimore, but uh, we've held out this long. So uh, I think we'll probably be around, but. Uh, at the present time, we're the largest village in Wood County, uh, but we're going to have to go a long way to reach the uh, status of a city, which is 5,000. What are we at right now? We're about 3,200. Oh, okay. If nobody was born or died today. <laughs> um, what do you think the world is going to be like in the future? The, the world mm -hmm. uh, scary. It's, scary. it's, it's scary, scary now. now. I don't know. They talk about traveling into outer mm -hmm. space. I'm not sure I would want to. Why? I may not come back. Yeah. <laughs> there have been some that didn't even make it into outer space. That's true. That'd which be scary. Uh, was bad. No. So. What are your personal hopes for the future? Like, where do you want to be? Still alive. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, I, I'm hoping to see the town come back. We have a very good uh, uh, village administrator at the present time. Uh, 
Alison Murray, who has been uh, working uh, quite hard to get uh, grants uh, for improvement of the committee of the community. And uh, next year, uh, they will be starting on downtown revitalization. Uh, they have a grant to do that, which will be new streets, sidewalks, curbs, and lights. Uh, they they finished uh, putting in a new sewer line, and they put a new water line uh, in the first two blocks of Main Street. Uh, the the whole community they put sewers in the whole community. We had what was called a combined sewer, which was the sanitary and uh, the street runoff all together and the EPA come up, came along and said you can't do that so we were forced to put in uh, a, a sewer line which uh, the one they put in is for sanitary and the one that was here then is for the street runoff and uh, that's a big step in the right direction in fact uh, at one point they uh, had to get a special permit to build a house in town because of the condition of the sewer system. Uh, but now that they have the new sewer in, that's no longer uh, in existence. So, okay. good thing everything got fixed. Hopefully. Hopefully. A lot of people complain about the water bill. But they have to stop and think it's a water and a sewer bill. It's not just water. What do I think North Baltimore will be? I hope it will be here. It has expanded. Uh, we now uh, are incorporated across the highway. And uh, previously, the corporation limits ended about a mile on this side of the highway, uh, west of the highway, and now uh, all those things, uh, uh, ABC building and uh, like that are in the corporation limits where they didn't used to be and that's more income. Uh, they're talking about building uh, a new water tower which ironically will be built on Water Street. <laughs> so, uh, there, there's things being done, but uh, we had a big growth spurt in the 70s. That was when uh, Bud Company, which is CSP now, uh, that came along, and that's when uh, Equity Meets built, and Air products and a couple other businesses came along, but for a small community, we have quite a few business uh, industries. Not enough Main Street business, but it seems that we're turning into <clears throat> an antique town. There's about <clears throat> three or four stores on Main Street <coughs> that are selling antiques. What are your hobbies? I've worked on, I'll talk about myself, you know, I'm shy and bashful. Uh, the historical marker across the street at the library, have you ever noticed yeah. that? Well, I'm working on one for the school now. The new school or the old school? The old school. Okay, that'd be nice. And everything's been approved and it's in the works right now. Uh, and we hope to dedicate it on good old summertime day this year. And uh, it will have information about uh, when the school was built, who the first uh, members uh, of the school board were, and uh, then I'm doing a program to go with it, which will list all the uh, superintendents who served uh, in that school. And, and here's probably, a, and I'm not going to be able to quote you the right date, but did you know the sports team was not always called the Tigers? Really? They used to be the Independents. I think it was 1931 that they became the Tigers. Wow, I didn't know that. And, and back in the old days, in the school at Burton, 1926, they didn't have a gymnasium. Yeah. And they would play basketball games in various uh, 
big warehouse buildings around town. Uh, and uh, so the school has come a long way. But that, uh, that's my latest project as a village historian. Uh, the, the one across the street was uh, the project that I did, I believe, in 87. So it's been a few years. The, the big thing is getting the money to do it. Where does that come from? Well, fortunately, uh, a former student whose father was the superintendent here, uh, Cindy Harris, Cindy Harris Thompson and her husband are uh, putting the bill for it. Two thousand seven hundred dollars. Wow. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, uh, the uh, American Legion is going to uh, furnish a flag pole and a flag to put up where the marker is. and We'll have a, it'll be on the corner there where the NB is. Yeah. Uh, that's where it'll be located. So That'll be pretty cool. Uh, that's my latest project. It seems if I always have some kind of project going to try to preserve the history of the community. Uh, I wanted to uh, save the village hall, but uh, they tore that down. I wanted to save the auditorium and the gymnasium, and they tore that down. Uh, I've not been very successful in saving the history of the community. And uh, then we had what I would call, I know unique does not need an adjective, but the most unique street in probably the world when we had Tar Street, who was a brick, it was yeah. a brick street, <laughs> <laughs> and they cover it over. And, you know, they complain about Main Street and all the streets in the community, but the problem is there's brick underneath all these streets and brick moves. And you're going to have to put a ton of blacktop on top of them before it stops cracking and everything. Uh, so the project for Main Street is to tear the brick up. I would prefer to have the brick restored. A brick street will last a hundred years. The brick that's under there is over a hundred years old. And, and what has happened, they haven't taken care of it over the years. Uh, if they had to dig it up for a water leak, they threw a gob of blacktop in when they got through instead of putting the brick back. So, probably one of the things that I'm proud of is the founding of the Historical Society and uh, obtaining this uh, building here for the uh, Museum Historical Center. It was uh, through the efforts of the Library Board and uh, Dr. Wolf, the guy who sweeps the streets, uh, was president of the library board at the time. And uh, when this came up, it, it was an insurance office at one time. And before that, it was uh, uh, the Church of Christ owned it, and uh, the pastor lived here. Uh, and it's, I believe there's a wooden replica of the building uh, that we have that uh, tells about what all was in this building prior. Uh, one thing that I really liked about being able to have this as a historical center is the fact that it's air conditioned. That's nice. M many, many of the historical museums that I've been to that were uh, made uh, in older homes or older buildings smelled like a museum <laughs> and they didn't have uh, uh, air conditioning, and that was, yeah. I think, a big thing that uh, I liked about this. And the library board pays all the bills, uh, and uh, all we do is take care of the interior. Yeah. Well, this building is pretty nice. Uh, it's a great old house. Let me see if I can think of anything that I wrote down. I'll leave this with you when you get through. Okay. Oh. Uh, major historical events, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Uh, that was uh, a sad time. Uh, 
The world has changed, it moves faster, everything moves faster. And, and drugs, drugs are such a big thing now. And the mass shootings, I think that's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I, I'm so tired of people saying, well, they're gonna take our guns away. Well, that's not the idea at all. It's just better gun control. Uh, but when a subject like this comes up, you'll find that there are extremes on both sides. And the people who want to keep their guns are always saying, oh, they want to take our guns away. And the people who don't want to take the guns away say, no, we don't want to take your guns away. But uh, everybody doesn't want to listen to the other person at that time. You would ask uh, something about trends when I was growing yeah. up. I think one of the things was uh, boys didn't have long hair. Oh. They had what they called a flat top or a crew cut. And every once in a while you'd find some kid who had a mohawk. But that, that was very unusual. And when I went to school, girls wore dresses or a skirt and sweater. and then we'd have a special day uh, every once in a while where we could wear slacks to school. But uh, we didn't wear slacks to school every day or shorts ever, ever. So, uh, when you ask about uh, the biggest changes, the addition of reservoirs and going to uh, the surface water instead of well water, Originally, uh, the water that we had uh, came from wells, and sometimes in the summertime, the water would be low in the well, and we would have to conserve. And <coughs> that was one reason that we couldn't get industry because we didn't. Most industries need water for one reason or another, and so then when we put the reservoir in. Uh, that helped to bring industry here. Uh, some of the changes I've seen, uh, the uh, St. Uh, Luke's built a new church, a Lutheran church, and uh, Good Shepherd built a new church, and uh, they have, of course, Hancock Wood built that nice big building out there, and of course, we've got the two travelers malls out there, The uh, Petro and Loves, oh, yeah. uh, and then the new truck wash that just went in out there, Big Red, oh, yeah, I see that. and uh, Dollar General. I'm kind of disappointed in the fact that that 18 area didn't grow better, faster with more things, but when it first started to be developed was when uh, the economy really hit bottom and so uh, there wasn't uh, much of anything being done anywhere uh, for several years. Uh, another thing that's happened too is they moved the administrative office out of the school. At first it was in the building next to the school and now it's on Main Street. Uh, and it, at one time when I was in school, uh, it was always in the school. The superintendent was there all the time, walking the halls to see that you were behaving. Were you behaving? <clears throat> always. Uh, I, <laughs> one time the superintendent said to me, you're out in the hall more than I am, Bonnie. <laughs> I don't know what that says, but <laughs> oh. One of the things we had, I, if you pay much attention to what I've been posting and, and see the response, I don't know how closely you watch it or not, but I posted this one about Johnny Dieter's store on uh, State Street. I got all kinds of kids saying, oh, I remember. Uh, you know, I can get a bag of candy for a nickel and things were a penny and like that. Well, that was located 
right out the back door of the school. And so it was a handy place to stop or to maybe cut a class and run over and get something. Oh. But that was a big thing people liked. And then uh, I posted a picture of the Wixon Quarry, mm -hmm. which was uh, the big swimming place at one time. Uh, and they had swimming lessons and uh, it was developed there for quite a while and it was a happy place for people to go. Nobody ever drowned out there that I know of. Okay. All right. That's all I have for you.